You recall when I started this series of videos we copied over a bunch of code, in fact the entire program, from a read-write uh, binary file that we'd actually written for a previous video. And the original program had two uh, buttons, read binary file and write binary file. And one of the things I did in the last video is I got rid of those two buttons. And you're probably wondering if I'm going to keep the functionality of reading and writing the binary file, which I want to do so we don't have to keep typing in our list view data every time. Uh, how do I trigger that off since I don't have the buttons anymore? And the answer to that is I use two other events that are based on the form itself. The first event is the form load which I can get to by just double clicking on the form because it's the default event of the form. And the second event, we have to look at events for the form and go down to uh, form closing. And the form one underscore form closing is a second event. So we basically read in the binary data with the form load and write out the binary data with the form closing. So at the start of day, we read in what we've put in before. And at the end of day, we write out everything that was still in the list box, which might have new data and might not. It might just write out the old data if we didn't add anything. So if I double click on the form, we go to the form load. And you can see it just calls one function called read binary file. And if I right click and then go to Go Definition, the read binary file basically has a series of local data items an integer, a string, a date time, and another integer. And then we set the local variable of read and read records, which keeps counting the number of records read, to zero and put a zero in the text field that shows the number of records read. And then we say if file exists student file and execute this code if the file exists. If it doesn't exist we just return because basically we haven't created the file yet so we have no saved data. But if we do have saved data we clear out the list box <coughs> largely in case this is executed over and over, but the way it's currently written it isn't. And then we use a using binary reader BRE equals new binary reader and use a file open with a student file name and a file mode of open, which means we open an existing file. And the using defines a scope in which this variable exists and this scope you can use the using handle of BRE but once you get out of this scope it doesn't exist anymore and then we have a while that checks the uh, property uh, BRE.BaseStream.Position which is the position in the file or the cursor or the file pointer has a number of names but it's basically where we are in the file in the process of reading and we check to see if that's less than the length of the file with the property bre.basestream.length and as long as it's less we still have data to read so we do a bre read int32 to read in the first field we wrote out which is an int32 then we do a read string to read in the second field and we read in another string and we have to do a convert to date time to convert that to a date time variable basically because the binary read and write don't understand dates so you have to convert the date to a string write it out as a string and then convert it back to a date when you read it in and then finally we do another read in 32 to read in the uh, last local variable and then we create a new uh, student info structure uh, passing these four values as the values to populate the structure with 
and call it SI. And this allows us to just pass the structure directly to our append list view data that we wrote in the previous video. So that, and in a way, is uh, artifice because in the previous video we did it this way and we can use the same function over and over by doing it this way again. And then we increment the number of records read and continue doing that in the while loop until we run out of data. And then we write the number of records read converted to a string to the number of student records text field or text box. And then set the local uh, or, or actually a global variable num student records to this number of records read since we use that in incrementing uh, when we add information using the uh, save student info button. Uh, if we double click on the uh, form closing event we'll go to that event handler and actually I don't just call one function I call a major function but I also have a lot of code within the uh, form closing event handler itself once again the familiar local variables for the four variables and a write count that gets set to zero which is equivalent to the read count that got set to zero and then I check the items dot count property of the list view itself and if that's greater than zero then we execute code. If it's zero, there's nothing in the list box, so there's nothing to write out. And then I use a using scope once again to define the scope of a binary writer variable, uh, BWR. And I allocate that with a new binary writer using a file.open of the student file name and a file node.create, which is basically going to wipe out the previous file. So every time we do a form closing, we wipe out the previous file and recreate it based on what data is in the list view. And then we do a for each list view item LVI in uh, LSV student data dot items, which as I said before is a collection, so we can iterate through that collection. And then we each look at each of the columns in turn for the record we currently are looking at the for each. And we do that with uh, the sub items square bracket column number square bracket dot text. And the, there's symbolic values for these to make it much more readable. I could just put a zero here, a one here, a two here, and a three here. And the code would still work, but it makes it much more readable to use symbolic values for these numbers and as once again we have to do conversion since these are all strings we have to convert the integers to n32 and do a date time parse to convert <coughs> the date string to a uh, date time and um, then once again we uh, put these four numbers into a string we create via new or, or rather a student info structure we create via new and pass that structure plus the uh, handle for the uh, binary writer file to a function called write binary record and then we increment the write count <coughs> and here we see again it's very convenient to create a student info structure so we just have to pass one variable even though we're actually passing four variables of a known of known types so if we uh, right click on write binary record and go to go to definition basically this has the four uh, local variables and it takes these out of the past data structure since they're already in the right format, we don't have to do any converts or anything. The student info already knows all the right formats. And once all these variables are in place, we do a write of the binary writer to uh, the binary file that's been opened and has a handle of BWR. 
that's been passed to this function. And when you do a write, you don't have to specify sizes because it already knows the sizes. <coughs> it knows what the variable types are, so it knows uh, what size to allocate in the file. Well, in the case of the string, it, it allocates what's known as a descriptor, which is a number of characters followed by the characters themselves. So it knows the length of the strings because of the descriptors, and it knows the length of the integers because integers are four bytes and n32. So that more or less completes all the code we need for writing the uh, data out with the uh, form closing and reading the data in with the form load. So if we compile and run this, <coughs> See, I've already pre-specified uh, seven records in order not to make everybody suffer with my slow typing speed. And the number of records read in is set to seven because it counted it when it read them in. And if I want to add another record, I can say uh, 55 student name Elmer Fudd. date of birth uh, 5 5 1955 and average mark uh, 55 and do a stave student info and that writes it to the list box using the uh, append uh, list box data function and then when we exit uh, the program by just clicking the X button it writes out those uh, eight now eight records and pops up a message box that, with the form closing that says eight records were written. And if we click OK and then run this again, you see we now have eight records instead of the original seven, including the last one put in. And these are all right now in the order that they're entered. But in the next video, we're finally going to get to actually sorting by clicking on the uh, column headers so we can change these orders based on what column we step we click on well I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe